welcome back to Mario MTG. I'm Mario, and today we have something a little different. I was able to pick up the Zendikar Rising Commander Precons, and I thought it'd be pretty cool to open them up and see what was in them. So let's start with the Lands Wrath deck. So I ran to my LGS and figured, you know what, I love playing Commander, so why not buy some of the Commander decks? Yeah, I know I'm destroying this box, but I'm probably not going to keep it. Um, the, yep, it's getting completely broken now. The deck's really cool. Um, wow, they really, this looks butchered the way I'm opening it now. Um, ooh, what's in here? So, take a look before we get to the cards. So each one comes with a little deck box for it. I'm assuming this comes with, yep, life counter. Um, so commander, so learn to play commander, little rules, 40. Uh, start your life at 40, command zone, battlefield, yada yada, all the rules for commander, I'm pretty sure. Um, those are kind of self-explanatory. A little deck box for it. Nice little art on it. I'm assuming that's the exact same for the other commander deck. Is there anything else in this guy? No? Alrighty. So, mainly got these got these pre-cons because there are really good uh, cards that are being reprinted in this. Let's just see if I could get a better little look. This is... Obun Moldaya Ancestor, so at the beginning of each com of combat on your turn, up to one target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until the end of the turn, where X is Obun's power, it's still a land. And then it has the little landfall mechanic. So he's a really good, really cool commander. Um, the one th big comment I have about these commander precons is I looked up the card lists, and for the price that you get these for, um, there's some really good things in here. So, like, I'm going to pull out all the really good stuff. There is also, there's a lot of stuff that isn't that high value. I'm just pulling all the tokens to the side here. So, yeah, like core ally tokens, elemental tokens. Are they double-sided? They are. All nice little Omnath tokens, because I know he's in here. Sapperlings, and then on your turn, a little reminder text. There he's over here. So, there's our commander. And, yeah, so, like, Abzan Falconer, whatever. Banishing Lights, okay. Condemn. So, yeah, some of these are really good cards, like, Core Cartographer, I think, is like an original Zendikar card. Uh, Retreat to Emeria. Acidic Slime's always nice to have in green decks. It's nice to have a bit of uh, artifact enchantment and land removal, so it's nice seeing that getting a reprint. Um, that's something. Beanstalk Giant, nice little ramp going on because you want to get those lands down. Circuitous Root, really nice. Elvish Rejuvenator. Embodiment of Insight. Um, I'm not sure when the last time this was reprinted. Evolution Sage. Um, so yeah, some some of these cards are fertile with the newer art. Are harmonize. Some of these are like, like look at that. Harrow is such a good ramp card, and I love seeing that it's been reprinted. Some cards are really good that were reprinted in here, and I'm most likely gonna end up picking these out. Like, look, uh, Heart Expedition is one of those cards that I think is really good for uh, Commander, especially when you're ramping. And look, look how many how much ramp cards. It just shows that Wizards like they were able to make us a good precon for a set. And give it to us at like a reasonable price as well. Like the last ones that came out for Akoria were kind of lackluster. Zendikar Royals, a nice little uh, Magic Origins reprint. What is this? Trove Warden. I think Trove Warden's okay. I think it's one of the better of the cards. I'm going to pull that out. And Geode Rager. So those are the two uh, new prints. Uh, Adamation Angel, I think, is another good one. I'm going to pull out here. Uh, Emeria is good. Sh uh, if, and Miria Shepherd. Wow, I can really speak today. Miria Shepherd's a nice little rare as well. Hour of Revelation. We got a Hour of Devastation reprint. Planar Outburst. I don't think destroy all non-line creatures. So that's kind of cool when you're running a deck that uh, I think with Ashaya. Ashaya is the one that makes everything lines. Yes, it is. I think with Ashaya, this kind of gets around that. So she might be an amazing card to pair with that. Always nice to have the Titans reprinted. Look how nice the Sun Titan art looks. Just fantastic. Together forever, we got together for other forever. <laughs> Jeez, uh, we got a nice little battle battle bond reprint. Abundance. I don't think I've seen this card before. Uh, the mending of dominaria. I could you know this was always a a rare printing. I think I don't think this was the mythic printing. Uh, mending of dominaria. And this little dominaria stuff. Mol Moltani Yavamaya's avatar. This is a really nice uh, green creature to have in here. This is renewals. Okay. Rampaging Baylots. Again, nice to have like a little fat creature out there. Return of the Wild Speaker. See, stuff like this, I feel like, you know what? We already have these. These are things that can be incorporated. Maybe some more uh, reprints would be nice to be added, but it's fine. We need to fill in everything. Rites of Flourishing. I think this might be okay as well. Sylvan Advocate. Waker of the Wild is a nice little Ixalan reprint. 
Uh, Living Twister is okay. Minan Den is another great card. Uh, it really it serves as a really good commander too. Having being able to play that additional land and then their little activated ability, return the land contr you control to its owner's hand. Target creature gains trample to the end of turn. That's another really good one. Let's put that to the side there. And then this is one of the bigger cards in this deck. Omnath Locus of Rage. I have this as a commander deck and I absolutely love it. Being able to have massive 5-5 uh, five, five elementals and when you have a way to sack them or just chump block with them or finding finding any way to kill them, having these little 3 damage triggers is fantastic, but also having a 5-5 five, five threat down is also just insanely good. See your sundial, I don't think is anything special. And now we're getting to the land. So needle needle spire is nice. Oh, we're not. So I thought they would have grouped all the lands together. Ground assault, okay. Naya charm. Struggle to survive. I also like the way they used to name them. Struggle. And then flip to survive. I, I like the way they used to do, do those. Southern reclamation. Treacherous, whatever. Um, Arcane signet. Yep, the card that everyone went nuts for for commander. This is probably going to go in a lot of commander decks now. Fantastic card. I mean, for... Turn one, you play land, soul ring, arcane signet. That's a fantastic start. So having this is always nice to have. Sandstone Oracle is bulk. Scare Tiller. Is this Scarecrow? Scarecrow. Um, soul ring, always an always like a must for decks. Uh, Blighted Woodland, Boris Garrison, Boris Guildgate, Command Tower. I like that's the old art as well. Uh, Cryptic Caves, that's a 2019 or 2020 print. I think 2019. Evolving Wilds is nice to have in your deck, and Curse and Verge. I don't think there are any big lands. Well, that's weird. The random instant in, in between all the lands. Roiling Regrowth. Yeah, that's really weird. They just have a couple of random creatures thrown in, and then a bunch of basics. So I'm just going to put these guys to the side. But yeah, this deck alone, being able to buy both of them for like 42, 45 Canadian and getting, look, you're getting Obun. Or Obun is really good. Omnath is fantastic. The Signet is fantastic. The the Automation Angel is fantastic. Multani is amazing to have. Soul Ring's fantastic. Another Command Tower is fantastic. Minan Den is nice to have. Like just with these alone, like just with those cards alone, you easily make up the money for that one. But let's put these aside and take a look at. Our other deck, our other one I'm really excited for as well, the blue-black uh, rogues. Now, this one I think has like two cards alone make up the value of the entire pre-con, which again, Wizards showing that they can print commander decks like this that are, well, I, I believe they're all playable out of box, so you can just grab a bunch of friends after you grab one or two of these and, and play. But at the same time, showing that they can make stuff like this is just... It, it shows us that, hey, we shouldn't be expecting crappy decks or crappy pre-cons for like $40, $50. That's really nice to get one of. That's a nice little box. I'm going to probably use that for this one. And again, the rules. Commander, how to play. And a purple life encounter, which I'm not a fan of these. Um, Yeah, so them showing that they can print off really good functional decks with very decent and strong reprints is kind of a blessing and a curse for them. It's a blessing for us because now we know, hey, we can get really good brand new commanders like a no one and still like they can it can still be a reasonable price for it as well. We shouldn't be paying $40, $50 Canadian or American or whatever you pay for it for a pre-constructed deck that's usually majority bulk. They prove to us now that we can get fantastic reprints in sets for a fraction of the price. So those were the tokens I just took out, and let's take a look at them all. So Aether Size, okay. Distant Melody, I think, is one of the cards that's like, it's nice to have in here. I can't I can't remember if this was one of the better ones. I'm just gonna put it up here just in case, but I can't remember. Factor Fiction, I have hundreds of these. Fairy Vandal, Invisible Stalker, I'm gonna put to the side. It's a nice little uh, unblockable human rogue. Um, I've lost so many times to decks that use him, and then you cheat in another creature in its place. Like, uh, I think the Yuriko deck has that, where when Invisible Stalker swings and someone ninjutsu's Yuriko in, and you're just sitting there, and you can't block it now. Which kind of really sucks. Uh, Prowler, Master Thief, Military Intelligence. See, some of these, I, do, I kind of feel like they have to add, because a lot of them are bulk. I understand that, and... A lot of them are from like recent sets, so they have to be included. They're not going to reprint completely broken black-blue rogues. Like You're not going to see Vendelian click get 
printed in here just because it's a really expensive fairy rogue and it fits the colors. Um, you're going to see a mix of things so like murder, Una's black guard. That's pretty cool. Price of fame. So like, yeah, some of these are like, they are reprints and that's a, that's an entire thing on its own is do you want to keep them in the deck as a pre-con? They're very good, but as a, like, if you buy the deck and want to modify it, you probably don't want to keep some of these in like Sir Conrad. Sir Conrad's a great card for milling and dealing damage, but it was just printed. Oh, look at this. Zulaport Cutthroat. I didn't know this was in here. That's one of my favorite cards because I have a, an Aristocrats deck that uses them. But yeah, some of these like, ooh, Arcane Signet. Put that to the side. And this one has a Command Sphere. Wow, that's really good. I don't think Enigma Thief is anything. Uh, Whisper Steel Dagger, I don't think is either. Uh, Notorious Throng, I know is one of them. So I think this is what I got confused with the Distant Melodies. But stuff like Prowl is like... It's a really good mechanic, Prowl. Here, let me get this up closer so everyone can take a look at it. Notorious Throng, Prowl 5 and a blue. Create X11 one, one Black Fairy Rogues uh, with flying, where X is the damage dealt to your opponents this turn. If this spell had its Prowl cost was paid, take an extra turn. So yeah, ha having that little extra turn card in there is really nice. Um, Scourge of the Fleets is nothing. Uh, Stolen Identity, that's a nice little gate crash reprint. Faded Return, I don't think that's anything great. Gaunti is a really nice card to have. I'm going to put him to the side. Um, in Garrick's Wake, I'm pretty sure this was reprinted. Uh, Necrom uh, Necromantic Selection, I looked this one up, and it is a really cool card. Destroy all creatures, then return a creature card put into a graveyard this way to the battlefield under your control. It's... A black zombie in addition to its other color types, colors and types, exile this card. So that's pretty sweet. Night Howler, a little Theros card. Uh, Ogre Slumlord we're going to put to the side because they're, they're kind of difficult to find. I'm going to try to get a little bit closer to the art. It's a little dark. Sorry about that. Ogre Slumlord. Uh, Sepicular Primordial, I don't think is anything. Consuming Aberration, I think this is a different art than the other versions I have. I have one from Gatecrash that has... A completely different art than this. Oh, one of my favorite decks. I have a commander deck for Lozov as well. So both decks contain a commander deck I currently have built. So the first one had Omnath, Locus of Rage. And this, I think, was the third or fourth deck I built, Lozov, where it's... I don't have that many. I think I have one infinite combo in it, but more or less it's mill your opponents and hope you hit a beefy creature they have and then just beat them down with it, which is the theme of Lozov, but I just love seeing that he got a little reprint. Notion Thieves, a nice little card. Uh, flash, if an opponent would draw a card except the first one, when each of their player... When... Oh, wow. If an opponent would draw a card except the first one, they draw in each of their draw steps. Instead, that player skips the draw and you draw a card. That's pretty nice. A well, well-needed reprint. I know they did a secret layer for Una, but having a reprint inside a commander deck is fantastic to have. Silumgar's Command is nothing that great. Uh, Spinal Embrace is okay. This is another one, Sig River Cutthroat. This is way, way before my time. And when I finally looked him up and what he did and how much he was worth, I was really surprised. See, uh, Wizards is able to pump in cards like this guy into these decks and still give it to us for like a reasonable price. Black Blade, Re Blade Reforging I'm to put to the side because it is somewhat decent. Uh, let's see here, Bone Horde, uh, nothing special. Obelisk of Erd, a nice, I believe this was Mas uh, Magic 2014, a nice little artifact print. Scythe Claw, I love the living we weapon mechanic. I don't know if they should redo it, but... Uh, Demir Key Rune's pretty cool. Demir Locket. Demir Signet. The Signets, I didn't know were worth that much. They're, like, going for two bucks, three bucks Canadian now. Heirloom Sword. Mind Stones are nice to see. Uh, Soul Ring, of course, and the Command Tower, of course. Demir Aqueduct, Demir Guildgate, and I think we have a couple lands before we hit a few more. Yep. So, Merfolk Wind Robber. I don't think anything special. Surefooted Infiltrator. Soaring Thought Thief. I think I think this is a Zendikar card. I'm not 100% sure. And then, yeah, all the basics. So, again, I'm just going to like highlight this entire deck. Because look at the cards you get. I'm going to... Like, look how great. You get the Commander, which in and of itself is just a fantastic card. Una, who is just needed a reprint, like, needed a reprint huge. And same with Sig. Having both of them are fantastic to see. Lazav is a really nice uh, treat added to the uh, deck. 
Um, Command Sphere, Arcane Signet, uh, Soul Ring, Command Tower. Um, what else? There, Obelisk of Erd. Like, look right here alone. Easily, easily. I think the first three or four cards cover the price of the pre-con deck. And then adding the rest is just just extra fun. Like, look. Ogre Slumlord. We have the Necromantic Selection. Uh, Gaunty. I think the... I think this is a good one. I'm not 100% sure. Zulaport Cutthroat's always nice to have. Uh, the Black Blade Reforged. Like, just look at the value in these decks. It's absolutely fantastic when you compare both of them. I'm going to show both of them out here right now. It's just completely... I, and it's, I think Wizards, by showing us that they can do something like this, have basically opened the floodgates for our expectations to expect cards like... like de Pre-constructed decks like this. If they continue doing products like this, I think everyone would be more than happy to uh, buy pre-constructed decks that have this kind of power level because now it might cost us what an extra 10 15 dollars to up up the power a bit anyways aside from that so this was my little box opening of both of the zendikar rising pre-constructed commander decks again please don't forget to like sub subscribe share the video and thank you so much for watching